There's now a very important step you need to take to make sure you're not missing important church updates on Facebook. Just open up the Facebook app on your phone, go to the church's page, click the like icon, then tap the three dots and tap the word following. Set the newsfeed option to favorites, live notifications to all, video notifications to all, and post to standard. Again, set the church's newsfeed to favorites and turn on all notifications. Now you're all set to stay connected and in the know. Hey church! Hey guys! My name is Missy. And I'm Daniel. And we're a couple of leaders here at TLC and we are um, just buzzing from excitement yes. from what we did yesterday. But before we get into that, oh, what do we need to do? Don't forget to share the stream, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or any of your social media outlets, uh, share them. And even if you can, uh, don't just share the, the stream, but add a little comment in there saying, hey, this uh, through COVID uh, community and being with people online and a little bit in person of what we've been doing, a little hybrid model, yeah. has been amazing. So just going that extra step will just engage more people uh, and checking that stream out. So, That's so yeah. good, yeah. So don't, don't forget to do it. In fact, do it right now, now. on your phone. It takes yep. just a quick second. So, <laughs> <laughs> But we, um, we're just coming off of our collective yes. rally, which was the first one we'd had in our first sort of um, in-person gathering in, in what, a year Over and a half? Year and a half. Yeah. Um, was a long time coming and it was so, so <laughs> was, sweet yeah. to see um, awesome. people face to face, even through masks. Yeah. Um, um, and it was so crazy because some people you hadn't seen in a while and yes. with the mask and then like new hair and different things. I was like, wait, who are you? Like, there for a like, second in a somewhat dark room, right? There were so many babies that were like, yeah. newborn babies that we haven't seen over a year and a half and they're like walking around. I know. It was, yeah, it was so surreal. That was incredible. Yeah. And so we loved, loved seeing everyone. If you weren't able to join us we hope that you were just praying yes. alongside us one of the things uh, one of the fun things that we did yesterday was had this huge 
beach ball. Like, massive ball. I mean, it was taller than, than I am, although that's not that like, hard. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It was huge. <laughs> it was massive. But what was awesome was we wrote words mm. on it um, for the church. Everybody, we had like Sharpies and people were writing yes. um, a word for the church that they heard from God. Um, and that was so exciting. It was almost too big to even like bounce around, although it did, we had it going around for like a little bit there. Yeah. That was really yeah. one of the things that I loved. Um, what was what was one of your highlights or, or yeah, favorites? Yeah, I that was one of the highlights. I think the other highlight that uh, I loved was just having everybody worship together. Yeah. Like uh, whenever that happens, it's it's like a little taste of heaven of everybody oh, together in good. person. And imagine that going on for like eternity. I know a bunch of people, even myself, kind of got teary eyed a few times yeah. through it. Just like man, we we miss this so much. It was yeah, yeah it like, was amazing. It's okay. I mean, because yeah. we'll we'll do these again um, as we as we get into sort of, course, of this new yeah. rhythm and, and new framework that we have. So there will be so many opportunities. Yeah. And um, like I said, it was a time of unity. Yeah. Um, even if you weren't there because you could be uniting with us in prayer yeah. and um, still worshiping our God who is the same. And he was so present. Like it yes. was, it was yes. so palatable. Like it was, yeah, it was just so intense. God's presence was there. There was like joy, there was healing, there was celebration, like mm. we envisioned, like God gave us so much and it was, yeah, it was just an incredible time. Yes. We, could, we could go on. We could, we could, yeah. 20 more minutes, let's go. Let's keep, <laughs> no, <laughs> we keep this thing going. But no, we are, um, we're actually gonna be kicking off a brand new series yes. today, new series moving series, into yeah. something new. You guys remember our word for the year is multiply. multiply. And now we're gonna be talking about multiply mm -hmm. rhythm. And what was really cool about yesterday um, was on that ball, we, you know, we had people writing words, like I mentioned, and one word that was written largely, so I, I actually remember it, we had a lot of scripture, a lot of good things on, on the ball, but one of the words was unhindered. It was written in large, beautiful print, whoever wrote that. Um, Thank you. Yep, <laughs> I like that detail. Yeah. Um, but it was unhindered. And as I've been mulling that over and thinking through that and praying mm -hmm. to God, like one of the things that will make us unhindered is having these healthy rhythms in our lives. Yes. Um, yeah. Here at TLC, we talk a lot about up, in, and out mm -hmm. as our rhythms. And we'll explain that further yeah. um, uh, just shortly here. But um, that is what is going mm -hmm. to help us be a church that's unhindered. Yes. I think it's even in one of our songs that we sing, like, make us a people, mm -hmm. something unhindered, yeah. a people of victory. <laughs> yes, yes, you know? yes, that song, yes. That one, right, Without right? music in the background, so Right, but, yes. I know. <laughs> um, but that's what we want, and so I love that that was spoken over our church, and I'm um, just praying that we get to mm -hmm. do that with having um, this understanding of healthy rhythms, what that looks like, and like you said, we'll get into that. But yeah, why don't you just bless us in the worship? I'll pray, okay. God, um, yeah, as we enter this uh, new sermon series, we want to be a people unhindered. Mm. There are so many things that are hindering uh, hindering us in our walk with you. There's comfort, there's convenience, there's the, the pull of the world of other things that are just vying for our attention, whether it's success or materialism or just all these things. And God, we want to, to hold these things open-handedly, surrender them to you so that we can be, uh, as that song we, we were, uh, we've sung so often that Adam is led out. Mm -hmm. We want to be a people unhindered. Yeah. And I know that's difficult, but I'm praying that through this sermon series, uh, we'd be able to surrender those things and be what you want us to be. Uh, that we can make disciples, that we can be unhindered, that we can multiply, and that we can do everything to your glory. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey everybody, my name is Adam and I am very excited to worship with you today as we go into our Multiply Rhythm series. And uh, we got a big chunk of scripture here for you, all of Matthew chapter 8. And so follow along on the screen below uh, and I'll be reading here. And as, as we go through this together, just expect that God would speak. <clears throat> and if he speaks to you, Remember that, considering writing it down and sharing it with those in your R3 or share it with us on, on Facebook, comment on this uh, YouTube video later, <clears throat> all that God is sharing with you. And so here we go, Matthew chapter 8. When he came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. 
And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone but go. Show yourself to the priests and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a proof to them. When he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. And when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she rose and began to serve him. That evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. And a scribe came up and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. And when he got into the boat, his disciples followed him. Behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even wind and sea obey him? And when he came to the other side, to the country of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men met him, coming out of the tombs, so fierce that no one could pass that way. Behold, they cried out, What have you to do with us, O Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a herd of many pigs was feeding at some distance from them. And the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, send us away into the herd of pigs. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and went into the pigs. And behold, the whole herd rushed down the uh, the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the waters. The herdsmen fled. And going into the city, they told everything especially what had happened to the demon-possessed men. And behold, all the city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they begged him to leave their region. Wow, what an intense section of scripture. So much healing, so much faith, so much um, just wild things happening here. And this What a great way to set the tone for talking about healthy rhythms of life as we observe Jesus as he just walks around and interacts with people. And so this should hopefully fuel our 
a time of worship together. And so expect that this time would be powerful, joyful, that the Holy Spirit would download something to you today. And so at that, let us worship together. I am super fired up right now, and uh, I want to invite all the R3 leaders across the city to join in in a time of prayer as we worship together. And so R3 leaders, jump in on this and pray over your people. Healthy rhythms, up relationship with God, in relationship with the body of Christ, and out relationship with society, and just bless them with healthy rhythms. Rhythms. Take this time and, and stand in the authority that Jesus gives you and let's bless our people. And if you're watching this online, just join in. Make this a prayer time of your own where you just, just ask Jesus to bless you or bless people you know with healthy rhythms. And I'll just be here uh, playing and praying alongside of you. And so let's pray. Yes, God, we stand with our leaders. We stand together in authority and bless the church. Healthy up rhythms to know you, Jesus, to know you, Father, to know you, Holy Spirit. Healthy in rhythms with community that's burden carrying, that lives the one another lifestyle. that we may go out and see a city transforms and so motivate all of us to make disciples who want to see these rhythms cultivated in others we pray all this in your name jesus Savior say, thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness watch and pray, find in me thine all in all. died my soul to save and melt the heart of stone and Jesus paid it all all to him I owe and sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow and when be 
for the throne I stand in him complete Jesus died my soul to save my limbs shall still repeat Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed still white as snow The crimson stain he washed it white as snow. Oh, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Oh, sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow. Rhythm is all around us. Rhythm is in music. Rhythm is in the wind and the waves. Rhythm is in the beating of your heart and the breathing of your lungs. But what if the rhythms you live out are off? What if instead of a melody, your rhythms are like clanging cymbals? Jesus desires to breathe rhythm into you so you can breathe rhythm into others. Jesus has prepared you to make a joyful noise. Jesus spoke peace to the wind and the waves, and he's given you the same authority. So get ready to multiply joy. Get ready to multiply peace. Get ready to multiply rhythm. Hey guys, we are in our new series today called Multiply Rhythm. We're going into the fall. Things are opening back up. Uh, people are getting back into their, their rhythms, like right? school and work, and some of you guys are starting to go into work now. Uh, there's, there's just, people are starting to 
work out, people are starting to eat healthy, you know, there's just all kinds of rhythms, family time, uh, and, and, you know, friends and all those things that people are starting now in the fall and starting fresh. So we're going into this new series to talk about rhythms for us to have as a people of God. And guys, we just came out of uh, this past week, we came out of our collective rally last week and talk about an amazing rhythm we're establishing corporately in our, in our church. And it was so amazing. It was so awesome. It was so great to, to see people we haven't seen in a while. It was so great to be together. Guys, there's so many amazing stories that have come out of that. So if you weren't able to be there, catch those stories, hear them. You'll see some video on it. You'll see, uh, yeah, yeah, just ask about it uh, so that you know how to anticipate in the future so that you can just uh, just build some excitement for when you're ready to step into that because uh, we would love to have you there. Um, I mean, here's, here's just a sampling of, of something. So um, we had a bunch of new people there and, and someone new said, uh, this is like the best church experience they've ever had and and uh and they're not as far as we know they're not a follower of jesus so that's a redemption right there it's it's redeeming someone's understanding of who the church is what the church is supposed to be and they said they just had so much fun right because our collective rally isn't your regular church service so uh, we just had a blast and it, and it was it was fun so many different different elements in there uh, that, that people were excited about. Um, I mean, my favorite part was uh, we basically had a big, a big dance party I and mean, people were dancing around and I couldn't believe it. like this, this cult, the culture in our church has shifted. It was so celebratory, so amazing. Um, and we had some people, we had one person in particular even say, I had, uh, I hadn't been to church since, and this was an older person, since I was a child. And I didn't realize how much I needed this. I didn't realize community like this was out there. Like guys, that is how we change perception of who we are as followers of Jesus, of, of what the church is supposed to be in our city. And so get excited for the next one. Uh, that'll be coming up. And so that's a big rhythm in our church that we have now uh, walked into. Uh, and, and hopefully now forward as well. Uh, so today we're going to talk about rhythms that are, that are corporate, but also individual. So these, uh, these three rhythms in our church are up, in, and out. And this whole series is patterned around up, in, and out. But those aren't just corporate rhythms we live uh, as uh, it, you know, corporately. Uh, these are also individual rhythms that you can live out in your life that you should that you should walk forward and as you learn how to walk with Jesus. So let me just break these down for us. Uh, let's start with up. Up is is worship. It's hearing God. It's it's hear and obey. Right? It's hearing the voice of God, it's obeying, it's walking in step with the Spirit. Um, and, and that's both corporate worship and individual worship. That's both corporately hearing God together and, indi and individually hearing God together. And then in is the, is the second rhythm, and, and in is about community. It's about uh, discovering spiritual gifts together. It's about living the one another lifestyle together. It's being together in this community of faith and, and that leads into out as well. And out is living on mission together. It's influencing, it's, it's, uh, it's sharing your faith, it's being salt, it's being light. And each of these rhythms happen, can happen at the same time. They happen simultaneously. You don't have to start with up in order to go to in, in order to go to out. They can happen concurrently. So up in and out should flow into one another and out of one another because those are the rhythms that God wants us to walk in uh, and in, order to, in order to spread the kingdom, in order to share the gospel, in order to share the love and light of Jesus Christ. And our mission statement here at Trinity Life Church is discovering identity and destiny in Christ in order to influence our city and the world. And so when we take up, that's your identity. So those go together. It's rooting your identity in God, in Christ, right? This is the up rhythm. It's born out of worship. It's born out of uh, hearing and obeying. And then the in rhythm is discovering your destiny, 
right? So in and destiny go together. You have the same destiny as I have. We all have a certain destiny as followers of Jesus Christ. And that is to, uh, that is to, to walk forward in the spirit. That is to be ambassadors for Christ. That's to be ministers of reconciliation. All those things are part of the in rhythm. And then out is living on mission, that's influence, right? So discovering identity and destiny in Christ in order to influence our city and the world, that goes without. And, and so it's living on mission, it's, it's uh, bringing others to Christ, it's showing them Christ's light and his love. So you have up and identity, in and destiny, out and influence. And things that flow into that for us are, are these six Fs that we've talked about, and if you've been around Trinity Life any length of time in an R3, you know we have these six Fs. And there's two Fs that go with each rhythm. And so with up, you have uh, the Fs of faith and fuel. So in the next two weeks, those are the two things we're gonna talk about. In the following weeks, we'll talk about the in rhythm more specifically with family, and fitness and those two things go into the in rhythm and then for the out rhythm there's two f's and those two are fruit and finances and those pair with the out rhythm and so we'll talk about those in subsequent weeks and you may be asking well why those f's why those six where where do those come from like where are we getting those why is fitness in there why is what is fuel uh finances is that is that, should that really be something we talk about? Um, and, and we're gonna answer a lot of those questions as we go through each F over the next uh, few weeks. Uh, but to kick us off with that, we're gonna start here in Matthew chapter eight, Matthew chapter nine. And uh, so if you have a Bible, I invite you to open it because I'm gonna summarize a lot of these verses. So instead of walking verse by verse like, like uh, we normally do, I'm gonna summarize a lot of these verses so you, you can follow it easily in your Bible if you have one in front of you. Uh, so Matthew chapter eight comes right after the Sermon on the Mount. And remember, uh, before we jump into that, oh, there's some, okay, we are trying to establish rhythms here. And uh, as you saw in the sermon bumper, these rhythms are all around us, right? There's music, there's, there's rhythms in, the, in nature, there's rhythms in your own body. We each have, have these rhythms, and, and for many of them in our own body, we're not even aware of, right? Like, think about your heartbeat. You don't, you don't think about, you, well, you don't think about it. Um, you don't have to think to make your heart beat. It just beats. But what happens when that's off? What happens when your heartbeat is, is uh, you have arrhythmia, it's arrhythmic, right? It's, it's off. What happens uh, when you're not breathing properly? You know, we don't even think about breathing and that's a rhythm of our body. They say the average adult uh, should breathe between 12 and, I don't know, 20, 25 times uh, per minute. Anything below that or above that is abnormal. Now all of you guys are thinking about your, your breathing. Uh, but uh, for, the, for most adults, they take short, uh, they take short um, quick breaths. Uh, and I was talking to, I think Jonathan about this uh, last week, and, and he was saying that they recommend long, deeper breaths because it's healthier for your body, but most of us don't even think about that. Well, most of us may not even think about these rhythms we're gonna talk about today. We may, not, we may not think about how healthy these rhythms should be in our life. And the whole point of this series is to get us aware of those things. Because if you're aware of how your heart beats, maybe you can do something about it, right? If you're aware that your breathing is a little off, well, you can control it. You can do something about it. I have a friend who uh, was diagnosed with heart arrhythmia I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. And this friend didn't even know at that point. But when he found that out, it changed his lifestyle. It changed how he, it changed what he ate, what he did, how he worked out, all those things, because he knew his heart needed uh, a different rhythm. Well, some people, if you don't do that, 
by the if you don't change uh, any of those things, well, you're going to have double, triple, quadruple bypass surgery. And, and, and so what we're trying to do in this series is we're trying to, we're trying to shift our rhythms together as a church, but also individually, because we want to have these healthy rhythms. We're up and in and out or flowing in and out of one another. So here in Matthew chapter eight, it's right after the Sermon on the Mount, right? So uh, during this time, I want you to be aware of of each of these rhythms, be aware of your breathing, be aware of your heartbeat, basically, be aware of each of these rhythms, each of these six Fs in your life, because the Sermon on the Mount deals with each of these six Fs. So if you're wondering where we got these six Fs, you don't have to look any further than the Sermon on the Mount. Three chapters, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, in, uh, in the Gospel of Matthew here. And uh, Jesus starts off with saying, be salt and light. He goes into talking about lust and anger. These are your, he's talking about your inputs. This is fuel. Uh, he's talking about your faith right before that in how Jesus came to fulfill the law. He talks about divorce and family, right? He talks about being a person of integrity in, in, those, in, uh, in those areas. Uh, he talks about loving your enemies. He talks about finances and giving to the needy. He, he talks about depending on the Lord and fasting, right? Fitness, uh, what, you, what, what you eat, how you, how you handle food. Um, he talks about not, not focusing on the things of this earth. Again, finances. He talks about not being ang- anxious in those things. He talks about the fruit you're going to produce. He literally talks about a tree and its fruit. Uh, so he goes through all of the six F's in here in the Sermon on the Mount. And then, and then the, fir- the very first thing we see in chapter 8 is how people respond to that. He ends, Jesus ends with hear and obey which is right behind me, right? Hear and obey my words. If you do, you'll be like the wise man who builds their house on the rock, on this foundation that's solid. But if your rhythms are off, if they're, if they're arrhythmic, if they're just off, well, your house will be like uh, the one when the wind and rains came, the floods came, the winds blew, beat against that house, the house fell. And great was the fall of it. And we don't want that for you. We don't want that for our church. We don't want that for you individually. And so we're going to talk about what up in and and out looks like through Matthew chapter 8 and 9. And as we do that, I want you to ask this question. How am I going to respond today? How am I going to respond today? Because through through this next chapter and a half, we're going to see a bunch of different responses to what Jesus just preached in the Sermon on the Mount. Up and out, the six Fs, hear and obey, all in the Sermon on the Mount. Living out the kingdom. This is what the king, a kingdom citizen looks like. Because uh, Jesus right before this says, here it is. I'm going to give it to you. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, let's see the first response. This is in, in verses 1 through 4. Again, I'm going to summarize this for us, rather than go verse by verse. So follow along if you have a Bible. He says in chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, uh, Jesus has just come down from the mountain, the Sermon on the Mount, and great crowds are following him. And then a leper, and it says, and behold, in verse 2, which when you see that word in the scriptures, it's like a slap in the face. It's like, whoa, wake up. Um, behold, a leper came to him. Now, a leper was a social outcast. So a leper could have been any sort of skin disease. But remember, in the Jewish culture, when you had something like that, you were outside of the camp. Right? There were ceremonial laws, ritual laws, purity laws, all these things governing those. So, and, and you were basically accursed. It was like, no, you can't be around anybody because you may infect somebody else. You may, I mean, sounds, sounds a little bit like today in COVID, right? Um, you may infect this person, this person. So this was like the low of the low, right? Like they, they, were, they weren't even looked upon as, as real people, uh, in many senses. So completely outcast and a leper has the audacity, the boldness, the faith to come before Jesus, kneel down before him and say, Lord, if you will make me clean. He wants his rhythms back in order. This leper does. 
And Jesus says, look what Jesus does. He stretches out his hand and Jesus doesn't just speak it. He could just speak it, but he stretches out his hand and he touches him. He shows everybody, the great crowds are there. He shows everybody that he has power over the flesh. And that he's even risking getting sick. He's risking it because he believes that he's full of the Holy Spirit because he is. It's just said that in, earlier in Matthew chapter th- uh, 3 uh, and then 4. And that, the fa- that he's approved by the Father, which has already been said over him as well in Matthew chapter 3. So he's walking forward in the Spirit, in the Father's approval. He reaches out, touches him, and the leper is cleansed. The leper is healed. And the leper goes out, uh, he's, he's cleansed, and, and, and he leaves. But the leper responds in faith. So there's one response. Jesus just says, hey, if you hear my words and do them, uh, you will be blessed. Hear and obey. All right? I will be with you. The leper says, okay, you just said that. Make me clean. And Jesus does. Right. So that's one response. The f- and then... In verses 5 through 13 is the second response, and it's a centurion. Remember, centurions are uh, the oppressors. They're the Roman oppressors of the people of Israel. It's not their land. They've come in, and they, it's, it, they've instilled their own government. They are oppressing the people. They're controlling the area. And so a centurion, they're not friends. They're, they're the enemy, right, to the Jews. And remember, but Jesus is just sitting in the Sermon on the Mount and we're to love our enemies. So the centurion comes up to him and says, uh, hey, I have a servant who's lying paralyzed at home, who's suffering terribly. Can you, can you heal him? And Jesus says, I will. I will come and I will heal him. And so Jesus is living at the Sermon on the Mount, right? This is the enemy. Even the centurion is doing that because his servant was probably Jewish, right? He wouldn't have had a Roman servant. So even the centurion is, is loving someone who may think they're enemies, right? And maybe through the centurion, they're enemies because they came in and oppressed them. So uh, you see here both parties living out uh, in the up and in out rhythms, living out the kingdom of God, living out the Sermon on the Mount, living out this love your enemies um, teaching. And the centurion replies this, he says, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, under my, uh, to to come and and heal my servant. He says, you're a man of authority, just speak it and it'll be so. And of course that happens. Uh, Jesus says, go, let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment you see in verse 13. So here you have another response. You have another response to, to Jesus and they're both tremendous faith responses, right? I mean, think about the centurion. He's going to someone from Galilee, someone from, uh, someone from Nazareth of all places, right? Like, even the, even the Jewish people look down on Nazareth. So the centurion, he's humbling himself before this ragtag dude from Nazareth who's just going around the countryside talking about things and healing people and, and doing different things, right? And the centurion comes and humbles himself for him in faith. So you have two responses of tremendous faith. And then in the next few verses, 14 through 17, you see the disciples are there. And Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law. He casts out some demons. People are, bringing, people are bringing the sick to him. So you see a lot of miracles taking place, a lot of signs, a lot of wonders, a lot of healing. And then you have two different responses. So everyone's seen this stuff, his disciples in particular. And when I say his disciples, I'm not necessarily just talking about the disciples he's said to come follow me, like the 12, not all 12 are here yet, um, but the larger group of people that are, that are following him. So in verse 18, it says, now when Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to go to this other side. So he's about to go to the other side of the lake and a scribe comes up to him and says, and remember, and guys, a, a scribe today, we think, oh, that's just someone who writes. No, scribes were part of the religious order of preserving God's instruction, right? It was a tremendous task, a tremendous job, a lot of responsibility, a lot of honor in that job, and so uh, in that that task. And so the scribe, 
he is of the religious order. And he comes to Jesus, right? And he humbles himself before this teacher and he says, teacher, I'll follow you wherever you go. Wow, another tremendous uh, response of faith, right? But then Jesus says this, well, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Remember, scribe, religious order, they're wealthy. They, 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 they're wealthier than the general population, right? And so Jesus says to him, hey, you can follow me, but I don't have a home. I don't have a place to lay my head. And we don't see the scribe's response explicitly here, but it's implicit in the context that the scribe probably doesn't follow him. Not in the way he says, I'll go wherever you go. Because the next verse in 21 says, well, another of the disciples said to him, Lord, let, let me go first and bury my father. So I'll follow you too, but I have some other things I need to do. I have some, some things I need to take care of first. And Jesus says, follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. And it seems, it may seem harsh, but, but Jesus is saying, follow me or go take care of whatever you need to take care of. Like, I'm not going to wait for you. As so many of us are saying, well, when I have this in order, well, then Jesus, I'll follow you. When I have this in order, well, well then Jesus. When, when this is done, when I'm finished with my degree program, Jesus, then I'll get serious about my faith. Jesus, it's just too busy right now. I just had a newborn. Like, you expect me to read my Bible while I have a newborn? Like, I'll do it after, Jesus. Jesus, I just got married. We went on our honeymoon. I just want to enjoy my marriage. You, ex you expect me to share my faith as well? Like, I'll, I'll do that later, Jesus. No, Jesus, I, I just had uh, my whoever gets sick in my family. I'll, I'll follow you later. I'll follow you after I've dealt with this. Jesus says, follow me or... Go do that thing. Let the dead bury their dead. And it's a harsh statement, it's seemingly, but Jesus is saying, you can't serve both masters. You can't. Like your rhythms are out of whack. Your, with it, your rhythms are, are rhythmic, right? They're out of order. So he's trying to, trying to help them get their rhythms in order. And what's shocking in, in this is you have, you have two Jewish people in this passage who have said, I want to follow you and I want to believe. But then they're like, oh, but this. Versus the leper and the centurion, the social outcast and the oppressor who said, Jesus, we humble ourselves before you in faith. You have the authority and we submit ourselves to you. Well, the next response is in verses 23 to 27. And the disciples are on the boat. This is like the ones who have followed him, who Jesus said, hey, come follow me. They're on the boat. And they freak out because there's a great storm. And the boat's being swamped by the waves. At this point in time, I would wonder if Jesus meant a literal storm back in the Sermon on the Mount when he talked about the rain and the floods and the wind uh, because that's what they're, that's what they're up against. Um, I, I would think, Jesus, I thought you were being figurative. Uh, but there's a literal storm here and they're crying out to God, save us, we're perishing. And he says to them, why are you afraid? Oh, you of little faith. So again, this contrast with the leper and the centurion and Jesus is like, guys, you said you want to follow me and you have such little faith. And this word is actually a construction of Jesus in the Greek. Uh, when it says, oh, you have little faith, basically it's a, it's a name Jesus gives him. It's a nickname. It's, it's a name that's just little faiths. So it's almost like Jesus is like, you're a bunch of little faiths. Like, you guys, like, did you see what just happened? And you saw all these signs and wonders and now you're freaking out about us. You're, you're with me. Jesus is like, I, I, and, and you could say, well, they did cry out to him. Well, but then they said, we're dying here, Jesus. We're perishing. Why wouldn't you save us? They don't trust him. 
They don't trust him fully. Their rhythms are off. And Jesus rises up. He rebukes the wind and the sea. There's a great calm. And that's when they say, what sort of man is this? That even the winds and, and sea obey him. Peace, right? He puts the rhythms of nature back into order. And it's almost then they're like, okay, you're, you're not exactly who we thought you were. And there's a new submission. So they come to the other side of the lake. This is another response, a, demo, a demonic one. We see a demonic response. We've seen a leper. We've seen a centurion. We've seen random people who come for healing. We've seen a scribe, uh, one of the disciples. We've seen one, you know, a group of the 12 disciples in a boat. Now a demonic response. Jesus comes up and they say in verse 29 of chapter 8, And behold, they cried out, What have you to do with us, O Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Well, Jesus ends up casting them out into a herd of pigs, and, and that happens. We're going to focus on that verse 29 here, because he says, because they say, the demons, what have, you to, what, have, what have you to do with us, Son of God? So two things here. They recognize that he's a Son of God. So out of all the groups that we just talked through, they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is the Son of the living God. They know that. They know that to be true. They believe that. They know his authority. They know his power. And yet they still say, what have you to do with us? Why'd you come here? Are you, did you come here to torment us before the time? How many of you are that have had that response? You're like, Jesus, why? Why now? Why now, Jesus? Why, why did you, why are you doing this now? And then guys, we attribute so many things to, to God that, yeah, we won't get into that. That's a whole philosophical discussion. But, but why? why? Why are you doing this now? God? Why, why does this have to happen now? When things were getting, like, why now? Did you come here to torment me? Like, how many of us have had that response to God? Not, a, not the response of the leper in faith. Not the response of the centurion in faith. Not the response of random people in faith. Not the response of the scribe to start out with faith and then leave. Not, uh, not, the, not the response of the disciples who at least called out to him, even though they didn't fully trust him. But the response of the demons who know who he is and yet still say, you don't belong here. You don't belong here messing with our affairs. You said that to God. God, you don't belong here messing with my affairs. You may not have said that explicitly. You may have not said that out loud. But look at your rhythms. What's your marriage like right now? Your kids, that's the family rhythm. And, not, and you may say, well, it's great, but okay, now are you too focused on that? Is your family an idol? Have you not, and we'll talk about this in a few weeks, have you not redefined your family as a family of God? Right? There's, there's so much more there. You know, how, 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 is your, how are your spiritual disciplines? How are you hearing from God? How is your desire to read the scriptures and to be and to, and to let the word dwell richly in you? How is your desire to sing praises and hymns and spiritual songs at any point during the day because you're filled with the spirit? Because that is what happens when you're filled with the spirit, uh, Ephesians 5 says and Colossians 3 says. That is what happens. You just do that. You, you want to make melody in your heart to the Lord. How are you sharing your faith? What's the fruit in your life? Jesus says, a tree shall be known by its fruit. What fruit are you producing? Are, are, you, are you bringing people to the Lord? Are you sharing your faith? Are you discipling others? What about your finances? Oh, here we go. He's going to talk about finances. What about your finances? What are you spending your money on? 
How much in debt are you? And whatever you call good debt and bad debt, debt is debt, the Bible says. The, the borrower is slave to the lender. So how much in debt are you? What prison have you put yourself in? What do your spending habits look like? Like how, how out, of, out of order is that? Where are your rhythms in that? What about fitness? Where's your self-control in the amount of food that you eat? How often do you exercise? And you may say, what does this have to do with, guys, everything in us is, is a holistic, unified, we're holistic, unified beings, right? Your spiritual, your emotional, your physical, your mental health all affect one another. So your, these, these six Fs, your fuel, that's, that's the last one, your fuel. What are your inputs? And guys, some of these rhythms, just like your heartbeat, just like your breathing, you don't even think about, not intentionally. Or you just do them. You just eat three meals a day because that's what you do. Um, you know, you just get a snack because it's there. You just, uh, you just um, uh, binge on Netflix because you can, right? And that's your input. Uh, you're, you're inputting these things and it's, it's uh, fueling you in a different way than, than the spirit wants it. So what is, uh, what is your response to God here? I, and which response do you want? How are you responding to God right now? How will you respond to him today? Well, after this demonic response that says, Jesus, why are you even here? What do you have to do with us? We see two more, and we'll end on these. One is of a paralytic. His friends, it's a community response because he's a paralytic, he can't come to Jesus. So, so his friends bring him, his friends get the paralytic, they believe in Jesus, they trust him, they make their way to Jesus, and they, they do whatever they can to get him to Jesus, and Jesus heals this, this person. And he gets up, he walks, he takes his bed, and he goes home. Just a tremendous response of faith and action in community. It's so beautiful. So we can respond there, guys. We want to respond to God as a community of faith, laying our, ourselves humbly before him, saying, only you can do this, God. Only you can get our corporate rhythms in order. Only you can get our individual rhythms in order. And what's more, God, we want this. We desire this. And so if you're like, just saying, ah, oh, I don't quite desire to read my Bible. I don't quite desire to, to spend time with God in prayer. I don't quite desire to um, uh, reconcile with this person who I have a broken relationship with. I don't quite desire to stop eating uh, the horrible food and to start exercising. Ask God to give you those desires for the sake of your spiritual health, which is tied to your mental health, which is tied to your emotional health, which is tied to your physical health. As this, and I'm not giving you a cure-all here. I'm just saying, start there. Start there and see what the Lord can do in your life. If you just become a living sacrifice and lay your life down before him and say, it's yours, it's yours. That's what these people are doing. And the last response is an individual one in this where he goes to a tax collector of all people. So this is a Jewish person who has betrayed his culture, who has betrayed his people for money who has become an oppressor to his own people. He's joined the Romans. And Jesus walks by and says, come follow me. And he gets up immediately and follows him. He leaves all that behind. Are you ready to leave your financial desires behind? Are you ready to leave your family desires behind? Are you ready to leave your fuel and your faith and, and, and your own desires behind for fruit even, for all those things to say, no, God, I don't, I don't want my desires to overtake your desires. I wanna commit my way to you, trust in you, and see you act because you will give me the desires of my heart as they align with yours. That's Psalm 37. And I want that, God, are you ready for that? If you are, we invite you to do that today because if you can do that, if you can respond today, like the paralytic and his community, if you can respond today like Matthew, who is called out of the tax collector's booth and follows Jesus, if you can even respond in faith like the leper and the centurion, if we can respond like that today corporately, if you can respond today like that individually, 
that God is going to change your rhythms. He's going to change your life and you'll benefit so much more greatly from the rest of this series. And if you are, if you are just trying to figure out your faith right now, if you're just trying to figure out who this Jesus is, we invite you to do the same thing. Just submit yourself to him, commit your way to him, trust in him. And I guarantee you, he will act today on your behalf for your sake. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for how you've shown us these various responses. And we respond to you today with the faith of the paralytic and his friends. We respond to you today with the faith of Matthew. We respond to you today with the faith of the centurion whose authority he recognized uh, in you. We respond to you today with the faith of the leper. We respond to you today in boldness and audacity and impudence because you are countercultural. The kingdom is upside down kingdom. And God, we ask you to move in our midst across our threes today so that we are changed and our, our houses are built on the right rock that is you, Jesus, so that our rhythms are right, so that when the wind and waves come and the storm comes, we will not perish, we will not freak out, the, the fall will not be great, because we will stand firm in our faith in you, Lord Jesus. We ask this in your name. Amen. Welcome back. Thank you for that word. And guys, it is now time to respond. And so I want to invite you to rise up so that we can sing together. And I want to invite again, you are three leaders to pray over your people as we prepare to respond to what God has spoken thus far and what God may continue to speak as we uh, worship together. And so now's your time. Let's just pray over our people that they would be open, that they would respond in a full sense. So our three leaders, go for it. I'm praying here alongside you. Yes, Jesus, thank you for this time. Our hands are wide open to you. Whatever you want to speak, whatever you want to do, we're here as a community, as your people. We pray all this together in your name. Amen. Seeking a heavenly 
Thank you to our worship team for just ushering us into responding to the Lord through song. Guys, we just did that. We were singing praises to our God, and we get to continue that now with responding to the Lord. And this is through a few different ways, right? We have communion, giving, prayer. Um, and the power of this is that you get to do it in our three, which is um, community. And you don't have to do it alone. You get to walk with each other. You get to discuss what was, um, what's been said, what we sang about, and what the Lord is speaking to you. You get to do that together, and that's the power of community. And so we invite you into R3 if you're not in one. We would love, love for you to be a part of one, to experience this fully and the fullest extent that you can. We want you to taste and see that the Lord is good and, and to share that with each other. And so uh, we invite you to that. Let us know. You can get contacted um, on our website. You can contact to find out how to get plugged into an R3 and we'll connect you to one because we have them all across the city. And so now we just want to bless you to um, enjoy each other and to joy in community, uh, to pray with one another and to live out this one another lifestyle together. Be blessed. Let's go!